Hey, hey, everybody, welcome to another Illustration Master Class with your host, Kyle T. Webster. That is me. Thank you for joining me. Today, this is one of those classes where I just feel like, oh, I'm so excited because I'm going to get to help you all with something that I consider to be essential. And that is keyboard shortcuts for people who do drawing and painting in Photoshop, okay? So if you're an illustrator, you're using Photoshop, you want to speed things up, you want to work efficiently, folks, what you need is keyboard shortcuts. And I'm here to help you. My name is Kyle Webster again, and I like to use keyboard shortcuts in my work. And today you can too. Sorry, that's my little commercial voice there. It's the end of the week. I'm getting a little bit crazy. Okay, now let's jump right to it, okay? If you're watching over on YouTubes or on Twitter, tweet, tweet. Remember, I cannot see the comments that you're making. That's fine. You can watch there and enjoy the show, and you're going to get a lot out of it. But if you have any questions for me, you want to ask me directly here on the live broadcast, you may do so at behance.net slash Adobe Live or be.net slash live or be.net slash Adobe Live. Okay? That is where I'm following the live chat. So check it out there. Let's say, uh, uh, let's say hi to some folks who are watching over there right now. Doctor Who is here. Can you believe it? The very one and only Doctor Who. Hi, Doctor Who. Cryo and Cody and Afroha and Cheryl. Hello. Nice to see you as well. Um, and Jack is here and Joshua. Hello, Joshua. Um, I'm trying to scroll through here. Folks, we got to get to it because it's a busy, busy day. And let's do it. So um, today what I've done is I've downloaded and installed this app called Keycaster, and that's Key, K-E-Y, Caster without the E, so C-A-S-T-R. And what it'll allow me to do is every time I hit a key, like the B key for brush, you're going to see it on the screen. Very convenient. So this will help you as we go through these key commands. Okay. We're going to start with some of the very basic ones that you need to just do simple things like move around your canvas. All right. Um, and one of the first things I like to show people is the ability to toggle through different views in Photoshop. These are viewing modes, if you will. There are three of them. Okay. Now, when you first launch Photoshop, this is what you see. All right. It's a window. All right. But I don't like that. I want to be able to see just Photoshop. So to toggle through these viewing modes, you hit the F key. F is in Frank. Okay. Um, now, here's one of the other things I love about this. When I use this second viewing mode, okay, and if you want to go, you can go to view, okay, and you'll see that you have screen modes right here. This is what we're actually toggling through. And standard screen mode is when you first launch the app and you can drag that whole window around, but full screen mode with menu bar is what I like. This is the second one when I'm toggling. I hit the F key to get there. Let me show you what I love. Notice what's missing. Scroll bars. The scroll bars are gone because I don't want to use the scroll bars. They slow me down. I don't want to have to come over to the side of my document, okay, or the top or the bottom, and move things around. No, because the second key command that I love to show everybody is the old space bar. Now, the space bar will automatically call up the move tool that is not the move tool for moving things around your document, but it's rather the move tool for moving the entire document. And it looks like a hand. You see it right here. See this guy right down here in my toolbar? Okay. I know it's called the hand tool, but that's just weird to me. Um, check it out. I hold down the space bar, right? And of course, while I'm holding it down, you'll see that it's just gonna go nuts right here. But look at this. I can move everywhere I want like this, okay? Now what's great about that is no dealing with uh, the scroll bars and this makes it really fast for me to just go zing move it over here zing move it over there etc okay and the other good thing about this is because I'm often using this key okay the space key to move around the document all right I'm doing that simultaneously oftentimes with having to zoom in and zoom out and while I've got my finger on the space key if I'm on a Mac okay I can also hold down the command key, okay? So if I hold down the space and command key, okay, I can zoom in, tap, 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 like so, okay? If I hold down the space key and the option key, I can zoom out, like so. So space and option, space and command. Now, if you're on a PC, okay, I want you to remember that every time I say command, when I say the command key, I want in your brain for you to think control. 
Okay, so when I say command, you think control. Command, control, command, control, okay? So for those PC folks out there, command equals control, and when I say option, I'm really talking about the old alt key, A-L-T. When I say option, you think alt. When I say option, you think alt. All right, folks. All right, so once again, holding down this, this space bar means I can move my document around, okay? Holding down the space bar with the command key means I can tap to zoom. Holding down the space bar with the option key means I can zoom out, okay? So already we're really getting somewhere. We have our viewing mode that we like where I don't have those nasty scroll bars in the way I can move all over my document, right? I can zoom in. I can hold down the space bar. I can move up, down, left, right, okay? Really makes it easy. There you go. All right, now, another thing that when I draw with paper or if I'm painting or whatever, and I'm on a table, a drafting table, or just a regular table or whatever. One of the things I do all the time, and I'm sure many of you do as well, is I rotate the paper. And what's lovely is you can do that very simply here in Photoshop. And I bet you can't guess the key for rotate. R, you guessed it. Well, you're so smart. And that's all you gotta do. You hold down R and then check it out. Woo, I'm rotating. Okay, just like that. R key equals rotate. All right, and another thing about this that I love is that I can do this in a completely organic way, just rotate, rotate, rotate at any angle I wish. But what I can also do is I can always come perfectly back to that 90 degree or zero degree angle, all right, for my canvas with the shift key. And here's the cool thing about the shift key in Photoshop. The shift key is always going to be doing one of two things. It's either going to be serving an additive function, all right, or it's going to be serving some kind of a precision function. I want you to think about the shift key that way, all right? Additive or precise. Now in this case, we're talking about precision. When I hold down the R key and just rotate, okay, it rotates at any old angle and it just, you know, it's not going to be worried about snapping to anything. However, when I hold down the R key and the shift key simultaneously, I can only rotate in increments of 15 degrees, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, which makes it very easy for me to snap back to zero or to rotate perfectly at 90 degrees or 45 degrees, right? You get the idea. So that is a really nice thing to remember. Hold down that shift key and you are working in a precise mode. You're rotating precisely at 15 degrees uh, with every consecutive turn of the canvas, all right? And we're gonna see some other examples of how the shift key does one of two things, as I said before, precision or additive a little later. But to review, I can move around with the space bar. I can rotate my document with the R key, okay? I can zoom in by holding down space and command. I can zoom out by holding down space and option. And remember PC users, every time I say command, you say control. Every time I say option, you say alt, okay? Let's rotate back, there we go. I'm gonna hold down the shift key when I do that and slam it back into perfect zero degree angle. There we are. All right. So these are some of the basics for navigating your canvas. Remember that the F key is gonna to toggle views. We didn't talk about the third view. It's a sort of preview mode. You can just look at your image on a nice, perfect black background. However, here's something interesting as well. You may prefer to work with a black background. And if you do, you can always bring back all of your menus and your toolbars and so on by tapping on the tab key. So I hit tab and there they are. They snap right back into place, ready for me to go. So if you like this background, you can go ahead and work in this mode and then just turn on that tab key, kablamo, and then all of your menus reappear again and you're all set to go. Uh, let's see, Anthony's asking for a link to Keycaster. Uh, I didn't provide a link, but I think if you just search for Keycaster, you'll find it right away, right away. Um, hi Delphine, thank you for joining us, and uh, Daniel, salut, ça va? 
Thanks for being here, Anthony. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Um, all right. Any more questions? Don't see any right now, so we're in good shape. All right. So moving on, we're going to start talking about some tools. I'm going to toggle one and a two right back to that viewing mode that I like right here. Um, and we're going to start talking about tools. Now, the tool that I use more than any other when I'm working is the brush tool. And fortunately, to access the brush tool, all you have to do is hit the B key, B for brush. So if I hit B, okay, I'm automatically brought over here to the brush tool, the brush tool. I'm gonna open my brush window here for a moment, okay, and just slide this over here. And now I've got a list of my brushes here. These are from the spring 2022 brush update, which was made available to all of you about a month ago. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, please make sure that you do. There are about 35 really fun brushes in there for you to play with, all with a lot of really interesting textures and things like that. And reminder that if you want to get the brushes, you have to come over here to this little drop down menu and go to get more brushes. And you will then be taken to a site where you log in and then you can download all the many brushes that are available to you. Um, but I'm looking at my brushes here. Now let's say I select um, this uh, Dave Hazard brush, for example, okay? And um, I start painting with it, and I think to myself as I'm painting, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go back and forth between the Dave Hazard brush and the Bark and Rob brush. Now what I could do is come over here, tap on Bark and Rob, paint with that, come back over here, go to Dave Hazard, do some more painting over here. All right, but instead of doing that, this is not something you need to do. On the keyboard, you have a period key and a comma key. But what I like to do to remember this is instead of thinking of the period and the comma, okay, one and two, right? Instead of thinking about those, I like to think about what's right above them on the keyboard. And I'm talking about a North American keyboard here, so this might be different from some of you guys overseas. I understand that. Um, what you do is, if you tap those keys, look what's right above them. You should have bra uh, uh, arrow keys, a right arrow and a left arrow, okay? And that helps me remember that what I'm actually able to do, if you look over here, okay, look at my brush list. I'm gonna tap the right arrow key, or rather the period key, look at this. See what it's doing? It's moving down my brush list. And then if I tap the comma key, Oops, let's see, something's not working here. There we go, there it goes. Then I'm able to go back and forth and back and forth and up and down throughout all these brushes. So if you wanted to toggle back and forth between two brushes while you were painting and drawing, like I could use the Marshall here, and then I could say, now I want to use Bark and Rob, I go Bark and Rob, I go back to the Marshall. You can toggle with key commands in your brush list. This is one of those lesser known uh, key commands that I like to point out. For people especially who have maybe a limited number of brushes and um, they don't uh, use that many and they like to just toggle through that list, okay? Um, Holly, you're looking for the spring 2019 brush pack used in making brushes, 2019, spring 2019. Uh, you know, if you see something that says like spring 2019, you don't find it, it probably became the summer 2019 brush set. A lot of times if I'm working with a brush set and I think it's gonna be released a certain in a certain season and then um, uh, there's a little delay, it might get kicked to like summer. So like look for the next season up and that's probably the brush set that I'm referring to if I'm doing a live stream or something before a set goes live, that's probably what you're looking for. But all of the brush updates are always found in that same location. You come to get more brushes and let that take you out to this website here. And you sign in to download and all of the updates will be found at the bottom of that page. Okay, all of the seasonal updates, except for the most recent seasonal update. That will always be found uh, at the very top of the list. Okay. The one I used in the Eric Carl class. Yes, Holly, um, that's, I used a, a brush set that was a season to, too early. All the brushes I used there are one season later than that. So it's probably summer 2019. That's what you wanna get, okay? That should help you there. All right, so um, back to our brush tool. 
All right, now another thing. Now I don't do this a lot because I don't use brushes that change uh, the softness. So if you're using like a round brush and you want to change the hardness or softness of the brush, okay, as well as the size and things like that. There's another interesting key command you can use. I'm going to zoom in here for a moment. All right, slide over. What you can do is you can hold down Option and Control. Now that's I'm talking about PC. Uh, pardon, pardon me, Mac users. Okay, if you're on a Mac, Option and Control. All right. So if you're on a PC, I believe that would be um, Alt and I'm not sure what the other key would be. Somebody have to help me out with that one because I'm not on a PC. But if you're on a Mac, hold down Control and Option, okay? And look, I can change my opacity right here by going, oops, let's try this, here we go. Up and down, there we go. Opacity of the brush. See how that number is changing right there? It's very small, I don't know if you can see that on the screen. But left and right, I can change the diameter. So the only thing I find this useful for is really quickly sizing a brush up really big, okay? But I don't do that very often. But if you're using a round brush, okay, let's try this now. Get the opacity back up. I'm gonna come back and use a, a really basic brush. So I've got this set of brushes that I gave my students. Um, blah, 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 blah. The default brushes, where are they? Here we go. All right. So let's say, for example, I have the hard round opacity brush right here, okay? And as you all know, this is like one of the most basic brushes you can use in Photoshop. And I wanna make it bigger or smaller, I hold down option and control. I can go left and right for the diameter. I can go up and down for the hardness of the brush. Okay, this is only available for those default Photoshop brushes, the round brushes that are um, the hard, hard uh, round and the soft round you can control the hardness right here, okay? And um, the opacity, I know there's a way to do this, but I haven't done it in a while. Let's see. Um, I can't remember how to do opacity for a hard round or a soft round brush. Maybe somebody can help me in the chat. But that can also be controlled with a key command while you have this little um, hovering uh, menu open, okay? But another thing you can do to change the size of the brush, and this is what I do most often, everyone's different, but my preference is to use the bracket keys, okay? So here's what I do. All right, I'm painting with this brush. I wanna do a smaller mark. I will come over to the bracket keys and they're located sort of towards the top right of your keyboard. The right bracket key is gonna make the brush bigger. One, two, three, see that? the left bracket key is going to make it smaller, okay? Like so. Now I use that most frequently. It's not very often that I'm using a single brush and making it really, really big or really, really small in quick succession, one brush stroke after another. Um, but if you are somebody who's doing that, then you might wanna instead use that control option idea and just like be able to slide really fast and adjust the size of the brush just like that, okay? So there you have another couple of good ones there. Now what I just did a moment ago might be something that's new to many of you and so I'm gonna point it out just as an aside. I wanted to clear everything on my canvas and just like if you're working in a word processor or any other application or sending an email and you wanna select all, in Photoshop these same key commands will work. So Command A is I'm selecting the entire canvas or the contents of that layer of the canvas, okay? And then delete would erase everything that you got there, okay? so. Good to know that. Um, command C, Command V, these are very commonly used uh, keyboard shortcuts for copy and paste, those also work. So if you make a selection on a layer, for example, if I select part of this birdie right here with my lasso tool, Command C, Command V, it will paste that selection here on a new layer. Okay, so there you go. Um, all right, now speaking of, speaking of selections, we're almost gonna get there, but that's gonna be a big one. We're gonna be using a lot there. A couple more things on brushes I wanna point out, and this has to do with the colors that you're using. So oftentimes, uh, when you're doing a, especially like concept right at the beginning of something where you're just using black and white to sketch something out. Um, so let's say, for example, that I'm doing some kind of a uh, character kind of thing. So 
I'm gonna set my, my, my colors to black in the foreground and white in the background. Tapping on this little tiny uh, black and gray icon above uh, is gonna set that for you, okay? So these are the defaults, black foreground, white uh, background color. And let's say now I'm gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna make this shape for some kind of a character, okay? And I'm painting with black right now. Okay, so I get this, this basic sort of a shape down. And then I say, okay, now what I'd like to do is quickly, quickly paint with white, all right? So what I do is I just keep hitting the X key. And what that does is it toggles my foreground and my background color, okay? Toggling foreground, background. So black, now white, now black, now white. Okay, and this is how I can quickly, quickly, quickly get something on the canvas using just two colors. So if you're using two colors and you want to toggle back and forth, this is how you do it. Okay? Kablammy. Just like that. Okay? Give this person like some kind of staff or something. And let me, let me know if this keycaster thing is helping you all to see this on the screen. If it's not, I can turn it off, but I thought, you know, it'd be good every time I hit the keys for you to see that in action. And especially when you watch it back, you know, it's always good to see that. Okay, so there you go. Um, we were talking earlier about moving things around, and this has to do now with moving things as well as with your brush tool. So I'm painting and I'm drawing, and one of the things that's great about working on layers, of course, is that you can move things around, you can transform things, you can do all that. And if I want to, while I have my brush tool selected, okay, so right now I'm painting and I'm doing stuff over here, and I decide that I'd like to move all of this stuff maybe over and to the right. So a common thing would be to come over here and tap on the move tool, right, and then you can move stuff over. But one of the things you can do, which is great, is while you're in the process of drawing, and this is a personal preference of mine, I don't like to have to ever switch tools if I don't have to. If I can use the keyboard to do something and still stay with that brush tool, so I'm mostly drawing and painting, then that's what I want. And so if I hold down the command key, look what happens, see that? Temporarily, my move tool shows up. So I can just move the contents of the layer like that. But I'm back to my brush tool right away. I didn't have to do anything to get back to that brush tool. Very important. Um, Crystal's asking about brush packs. Not brush packs? I'm not sure what that means. Um, this bracket technique can be used in brush pack. Yes, this bracket technique works for all brushes, any brush in Photoshop. Okay, hope that helps. Uh, right. Okay, so um, where were we? Uh, yes, so I can move things around by holding down the command key. All right, very nice. And um, this means that I can quickly draw something, right? And then I can select it and move it anywhere I like, right? And if I want to use the lasso tool, what do I do? L, L for lasso, L. Grab that, okay? And right now, you'll notice that I can only move the lasso itself. See that? I can only move the lasso itself. Again, this same command key comes in handy because the moment I make a selection and hold down the command key, look at this. I'm back to the action of moving that selection anywhere I like. Command D, deselect. Okay, command D, deselect. So remember that command key is really, really great because it allows you to move things around really quickly without having to explicitly go and select the move tool. It's only going to temporarily call it up for you. Okay, all right, so back to our brush tool here for a minute, B, make sure that I'm on the brush tool. I'm gonna grab a color, I'm gonna paint with it here, and now I'm gonna grab another color and paint with it over here, okay. Now let's say I decide, all right, I'd like to go back to painting with that red color. Well, you could come over here and you could say, hmm, where's my eyedropper tool? Oh, there it is. Then come all the way over here and say, I'm gonna select red and then start painting again. So hit the B key, start painting. But you shouldn't do that. Don't do that, don't do that, okay? 
Um, JF, I am not using any mice. I'm just using uh, the. I mean, I have a laptop, and I'm just using the t the touch uh, touch strip, whatever you call it, um, on the laptop. Um, I'm not using a mouse at all, um, and I'm drawing with a Wacom stylus on a Wacom Cintiq tablet, 22 HD. All right, so if I want to select color on the canvas and I want to make sure that I stick with my brush, remember the key here is working efficiently, not trying to switch tools all the time. What I do is I hold down the Option key, and remember on a PC that's Alt. Every time I say Option, you think Alt. But if you're on a Mac, hold down the Option key, and look, now I've got my eyedropper tool. Back to yellow, back to black, back to red. I just hold down that Option key, tap, grab whatever I need, and paint. And anybody who's watched any of my master classes before where I mix color, there's actually a really good class I really hope everybody watches about how to get harmonious color every time you paint digitally. This is really important. Um, you can uh, see that I am constantly holding down that option key to sample color all the way throughout the document. And that's how I'm able to quickly mix color together and get colors that are harmonious, etc. So that option key has to become your best friend. Um, and I should mention something to everybody. I'm left-handed, so for me, um, it's pretty easy to have my right hand hovering around where basically my, my pinky finger and or my third finger, my ring, ring finger on that hand, I can snag that space bar really easily and then my, my middle and first fingers are constantly just hitting those command and option keys and moving up towards um, the X key to toggle my foreground and background colors reaching for that shift key. Um, the cool thing is that on the right side of the keyboard, things are pretty much the same, although you don't have as, as easy access to maybe some things like copy paste, okay? Command C, Command V, and stuff like that. But I don't use those that much anyway, so it's okay. Um, all right, so again, B, brush, option key, right? Holding down the option key and just sampling color. Sample, 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 sample. Okay, there you go. Spacebar, move my canvas. All right, Command A, delete, Command D, and there you go. I painted, I sampled some color, I selected everything, I deleted it, and I deselected. There you go. Um, you said sharpening and softening. No, you can't soften the edges of a custom brush crystal. You can only do that with the hard round or the soft round brush in Photoshop. Those are the only brushes that can have soft edges or hard edges that you can control, okay? Um, alrighty, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move over to talking about selections, all right? So again, L, L is lasso. There's your lasso tool. Um, and so here we go, I can, I can make a selection like so with the lasso tool. And a thing a lot of people don't know, and I love to point this out and, and help people out with this one, is this. Typically what happens is, if you wanna make a selection with some curvilinear uh, sections, but then you also wanna have some really straight edged selections, what people will wind up doing is making part of the selection with this standard lasso tool, okay? But then they wanna use the polygonal lasso tool to make those straight edge selections, this tool right here, the second sub-tool in your lasso tools, okay? Now you don't have to do that, all right? The first thing I'm gonna show you is how to toggle through these tools. Use the Shift key, hold down Shift and then tap on L. So as I hold Shift and tap L, watch over here, folks. See what's happening? It's toggling through by different subtools in the lasso category. So holding down shift and hitting L one time pops me right over to the next lasso, which is the polygonal lasso tool. And I told you before that holding down the shift key means you're gonna do something precise or you're gonna do something additive. Now in this case, right, me holding down the shift key and tapping the L key, it's not quite one or the other, okay? It's a little bit different. So there are exceptions, but generally speaking, it's additive stuff and it's precise stuff. And I'm about to show you something additive right now because I wanna to add to this selection. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and that means I'm now adding to the active selection right there. Okay, hold it down again, I'm adding. 
Now I like this way better than changing the mode of the lasso tool. Um, any tool you select over here in Photoshop, okay, all of the tool options will show up right here, okay? And in this little bunch right here, you have four different modes for your lasso tool. One of them is this mode, which is additive, okay? So you're gonna add to the selection, but I don't wanna have to come up here and tap on that every time I wanna add to a selection, no. I'd rather just hold the shift key down. And a cool thing you can do is if you wanna remove stuff from the selection, hold the option key down. And now I can remove bits from that selection, okay? Adding and subtracting. Shift key, option key. But that isn't the cool thing I wanted to show you. There is a much lesser known feature with the lasso tool in Photoshop, and that is this, Command D, I'm deselecting. I just made a selection where I had to have some curvilinear bits and some straight bits. But what if I wanna do both, and I wanna do it all in one selection? I don't want to switch tools or any of that business, okay? Here's what you do, check it out. So let's go back to our regular lasso. I hit Shift. L until I toggled through to the regular lasso. Here's a regular lasso tool, there it is, okay. Watch this. Um, I'm gonna make a curvilinear selection. I'm gonna pause for a moment. Now I'm still maintaining contact with um, my pen on my Cintiq on my tablet. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hold down the option key. And the moment I do that, look, I can lift my pen up right here and I can start tapping anywhere on the canvas to make a straight line okay now if I'm ready to start drawing a curvilinear line again I just maintain contact okay and I let go of the option key and now I'm back to drawing curvilinear hold down the option key tap 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 and complete my selection so you can do this both way, both ways. If you're using the polygonal lasso tool, for example, let's say I'm using the polygonal lasso tool to begin with right here. And then I decide I wanna draw a curvilinear line. I hold down the option key and I start drawing, okay? Then I can go back to the polygonal lasso tool. See that? So really, just because of the keyboard, you're able to toggle between both lasso tools that you use most, most frequently without having to do this uh, this thing where you have to go over and switch the tools or hit shift L and so on. Let me know in the chat, how many of you already knew this key command or how many of you learned something new today with this? I would love to know that. Um, Cause that's one that, you know, I've been using Photoshop a long time, but I'm always discovering little things like this and I go, no way, that's amazing. All right, so there you go. All right, now speaking of making selections, one of the things you have to do most often when you make selections is you wanna fill them with color, okay? And um, let's do that. So here, I'm gonna make a selection. Okay, so now we've got this little doggy dog. Oh, that's terrible, but we'll just, we'll just allow it. I'll just shift and add to that. So it's not so horrendously bad. All right, good enough. So we have this dog right there, okay? And I want to fill it with color. I come over here, I grab a color. And normally what you could do is you'd have to, you know, come to your um, uh, edit and then fill, right? Or you could use your paint bucket tool, you know, uh, we don't want to do any of that. Paint bucket's right here, okay, inside the gradient tool there. Um, but we don't want to do that, okay? We want to save time. That's what this is all about. And so what you do is to fill in with your foreground color, hold down Option and hit Delete. Option, Delete equals Fill with Foreground Color. Remember, on a PC, that's Alt, Alt, Delete, okay? All right, now let me undo that. Command Z, Command Z is undo, right? Um, command shift Z is redo, important to note. Uh, what if I wanna fill with the background color? Let's go ahead and assign a color to the background color, make it a different color, okay? If you wanna fill with the background color, you hit command delete. And remember on a PC, that would be control delete. I say command, you say control. 
Okay, so there you go. Command delete, option delete. Constantly using this. I'm constantly filling with color um, and I never want to have to go up to edit and fill or use the paint bucket tool or any of that nonsense. I just use the keyboard. Option delete, command delete. So fast, so zippy. All right, there you go. And then I could come over here and make a little circle for an eye and, and just cut that out. And this brings us to another selection tool, which is your marquee tool, uh, which is your circular selections, your rectangular selections. Um, now, it's called the marquee tool because who knows? I don't know. Somebody who's a Photoshop wizard from way back when would understand the reason for that. But uh, what it is is your circular selections and your rectangular selections, and it's right underneath your move tool here. And the reason it's important to know that it's called the marquee tool is because the key command for it is, in fact, M, the letter M. So if I hit M, right, now I've got my marquee tool. Just so happens to be that it's a cycle right now. It's very nice, okay? And I want to draw a circle for the eye. Okay, but look, I'm drawing an oval. Let's try that again. Nope, that's an oval. How do I draw a perfect circle? Remember our friend, the shift key. Shift key is precision and addition. Okay, so for precision, I hold down the shift key and now perfect circle, just like that. Delete, clear it away. Command D. Okay, there you go. So using any of these tools, you can have some precision baked in. So if we jump, jump back for a second to the lasso tool, for example, let's do that. If I hold down, uh, sorry, if I um, hold down shift when I'm using the polygonal lasso tool, can anybody guess what would happen to the line? It's already a straight line, right? So what would I need to be even more precise if I'm already drawing straight lines? The answer is the angle of the line can be more precise. Zero degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees. So let's do this. I'm drawing a selection and suddenly I stop for a moment and I think I'd like for the next portion of this to be a perfectly horizontal line. I'm holding down a shift key now and look what happens perfectly horizontal. I cannot break from that other than vertical, 45 degrees, horizontal, like so. So bam, there we go. I'm going to bring this up with my, my space key. There we go. And then back we go. So I use the space bar to shift my canvas upwards while I had an active selection going with the lasso tool. That's another good thing that you can do. But um, in order to get this perfectly horizontal line, I held down the shift key. Ta-da! Okay, there you go. All right, so this would, of course, work with your rectangular marquee tool. And just like any of the tools over here, if you want to toggle through the tools, okay, if I want to be like, I just made a circle, now I want to make a square. Well, instead of coming over here and long tapping on this to get to the rectangular marquee tool, all right, you know that you can always go to your shift key and hit shift M and it toggles you right to that rectangular marquee tool. So now I'm dealing with that, just like that. Okay, very nice, very nice. All right, pause for a minute, see if we have any questions, let's see. Paul Tranny and Kathleen are also left-handed. I didn't know that. Should have known that Paul was, but I didn't know that. All right, so this is a lot to take in at once. Yes, this is why these classes are archived, Cryo. Yes, because you can watch this as many times as you want. Um, my goal is in the hour that we have together, or 55 minutes, to show you as much as possible. These are all the ones I use on a daily basis. Every time I draw and paint, I'm using the lasso tools to make selections. I'm deselecting, I'm adding to selections. I'm using the brush tool, of course. I'm sizing it up, I'm sizing it down. I'm toggling my colors. I'm moving around my canvas. I'm rotating it. I'm zooming in, I'm zooming out. Um, you know, this is, this is the stuff you just do day in and day out. It's really good to get it under your fingertips, literally. Uh, Valdir says, I use this tip a lot with the brush tool when masking straight edges. Yeah, that's right, because it works with the brush tool as well, holding the shift key down. In fact, why don't we take a look at that? Look, here we go. Brush tool. Here's my brush. I'm drawing. Hold down the shift key. And look at that. 
perfectly straight line, perfectly straight line, okay? Oops, there we go. There it is, shift key to the rescue. That's what's making that happen. Another thing you can do with the shift key when you're drawing and painting, now I don't do this very much because so many of the brushes I use are really sensitive to pressure. But if you do have a brush that maybe has no pressure sensitivity tied to it, and you wanna do a lot of straight lines, what you can do is tap on the canvas with your brush, hold down the shift key and tap somewhere else. Photoshop will connect those two points that you tap on and draw a straight line between them. You tap, you hold down the shift key, you tap again. Now the brush I'm using here is not the best example for this, but what we could do is come into our brush settings and we'll go here. We'll just turn off transfer, make it a little smaller. And now that I have 100% flow and no transfer, which means it's not gonna respond at all to pressure really. I'll turn off texture as well. So now my brush just does this. I'm gonna tap here, hold down the shift key, tap there. See, tap, 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 tap. There you go. Okay, there you go. So that is a pretty neat little thing. Um, I, again, I don't use that very much because I don't very often draw with brushes that don't have some um, function uh, that is relying on the amount of pen pressure that I am using. So it is good to know though, good to know. Okay, Command A, delete. Command D, deselect. There you go. Okay, so now we're gonna come back to making selections and we're gonna learn some more stuff about this, all right? Because here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a selection. All right, and we're going to come to our brushes and we'll just grab something fun. So let's do, um, where is that uh, wood chip Joey? Wood chop Joey, there it is. I like this, I like this brush, it's fun. Now I'm just gonna paint inside this selection here, okay? Now let's deselect. All right, let's say I want to take part of this selection and duplicate it really quickly. Watch this. I'm gonna hit the L key, select the part that I want to duplicate, okay? And hit Command J, Command J or Control J on a PC. Now I use this one all the time, Command J. This allows you to duplicate an entire layer's contents or a portion of a layer's contents and dump it onto a new layer. So useful. So hit the V key if I want. Now I've got the move tool. V equals move tool. But there it is. There it is. Now I've got that on a separate layer living on its own. Okay, very nice. Um, now if I were to do this with the entire layer, let's try that. So I, instead of selecting anything, I've got the whole layer, I hit Command J. Okay, I'm gonna hold down the command key. Remember that temporarily calls up your move tool. And now I've got it its own layer. Okay, there it is. So you know, okay, command J is a great one. You can quickly duplicate stuff and then keep on rolling. But another interesting thing is this. Now I've got this on a separate layer. Now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna grab um, this section again. And now I'm gonna move this section and copy it. And what I'm gonna do is, instead of copying it to a new layer, I'm just gonna copy it on the same layer. Now to do this, I hold down the Option key, okay? And the Command key. And you'll notice that, as I zoom in here, you'll see Option holds down, it's gonna just make it so I can select, you know, less of the selection. We know that already. But when I add that Command key, Look at my icon now, my little, the little uh, mouse icon. It changes to a duplicate icon, right? Now I'll drag it anywhere I like, okay? And then I will deselect. And you'll note over here, it did not make a new layer. This is all part of one layer, look. See, hide it, show it, hide it, show it. So you can duplicate and move things around on one layer by making a selection of them and then using this key command, option and command, to copy and drag them anywhere else but not put them on a separate layer. And there are times when you would want to do this. There are times when you want to do this and it's good to know that you can do this. Um, yes, Noyen, the, this is a free stream and it's gonna be uh, archived on YouTube and on Behance 
um, for you to watch anytime you like. Okay? <clears throat> I'm not sure if I understood your question, but I hope that answers it. Okay. Um, so there you go. So there are different ways to duplicate and uh, things you can duplicate them to a new layer. If you do that, I use co uh, Command J or Control J if you're on a PC. If you're on the same layer, I make a selection of the area and then I duplicate it that way. Um, and that to me is just uh, really convenient. Alrighty. So again, pausing for any more questions. Reverb my con Control J is a fave for me in Illustrator. Cool. You know what? I don't use Illustrator very much. I'm such a pixel guy, but yes, it's useful all over the place for sure. Um, Cryo says, I didn't know that last one. Good. I hope, I hope I'm teaching you all some, some new little nuggets here and there. That's great. Uh, okay. So we learned how to make selections of things and then duplicate them. Um, we now need to talk about something that is really, really important, and that's the ability to transform things. Transform things. Um, so, I'll hide this for a moment. Transforming um, areas of your layer or all the contents of a layer are something that you're, is something you're going to do all the time. You're going to resize stuff, you're going to rotate stuff, you're going to skew it, whatever. And my favorite method for transforming everything and anything is to use free transform. In order to access free transform, you all, all you have to do is so easy is just hit command T. Command T, think about the word transform. And now that I have this bounding box around the contents of my layer, I can do so much with it in combination with uh, with using, using the stylus in combination with the keyboard. So here we go. Now normally if I just use my stylus, okay, I can resize, I can stretch. Okay, but that's about it. And by the way, um, I do not use Photoshop where the default mode for transformation keeps your um, height and width ratio uh, safeguarded, okay? I don't do that. Um, if I did, this is what it would look like. All right, this is what you'd expect to see. That's sort of the new default, okay? But because I've been using Photoshop for, yeah, 25 years, I'm used to having to hold down, surprise, the shift key to get precise transformations. Um, and because I'm so used to it, I just decided I wanted to keep it that way. And you can do that by going to your um, preferences for Photoshop. Uh, let me just deselect here for a second. Uh, preferences and go to general. And you have this use legacy free transform. That I keep checked, turned on. This is what I'm used to. Um, so command T, we're in transform mode now. This is free transform mode. I wanted to show you some really interesting things you can do here. Now, number one, you know you can rotate. Just make sure that you're farther away from these handles, we call them on the corners and the sides. These little squares are called handles. We just come out here. Okay, sometimes you call these anchor points if you're dealing with making paths, but I can rotate. Does anybody have any guess as to how I would rotate at a perfect 15 degree angle? I bet you can figure this out if you remember how we rotated the canvas. What would be the thing I would have to hold down? I wonder. Shift key, shift key, look. Right, that's what's gonna happen. All right, let's snap it back. We're gonna go back to zero degrees. Ding, ding, ding. And in addition to rotation, check this out. Here's the fun stuff. Hold down the command key and tap on any corner and start to drag. And look, you can transform from just that one corner. See, you can flip things around like that. Pretty cool. Command Z brings me back to where I was. So you can do that from any corner. Okay. I'm at, look how useful this is for like animation. Like imagine if I just made a bunch of 
duplicates of this layer and just did a couple of free transforms for each layer to make it do this and then could just animate it, right? Free transform is great for that. All right, but to access that, again, I'm using the command key on the PC that's control and then I can grab from any handle. But there's more, if I hold down the command key and the shift key, now I can only drag either perfectly vertically, okay, like this, or horizontally. So that's a great thing to be able to restrict. Another thing you can do, hold down the shift key and grab one of these middle handles. And now look, now you're like skewing it, okay? And as usual, if you hold down the shift key simultaneously, the height is protected in this direction, right? Just like the width is protected in this direction, okay? See that? So that's Command or Control plus Shift using Free Transform. Um, oh, here's a Valdair says, quick tip for creating a Control J in Illustrator would be setting an action for Control C then Control F. Oh yeah, okay. Glad you're a pixel guy, says Holly. Oh, you use watercolors. Well then Holly, you should download Fresco, it's free. And the watercolors are really fun in Fresco. If you have an iPad or a, a PC, it should work. Uh, okay, so what else can we do with this? Um, hold down Command. Uh, one second, let's see here. Whoop. Hold down Shift and Option and Command. There we go. And now look. You can skew in perspective one way or the other. See that? So this is why free transform to me is the most important um, transform mode because it allows you to do all the other transformations. Skew, perspective, um, rotate, resize, you know, all these things. It allows you to do all of them with one single, uh, one single mode, okay? Command T, that's the key. And then you use the keyboard to access all these different ways of doing it. Pretty nice, right? Pretty nice. All right, now when I get out of transform mode, I always just hit the escape key. Um, that just jumps me right back out of transform and undoes all my changes. If you wanna commit your changes, you hit the return key or the enter key, okay? All right, I'm gonna slide that over using the command key. I hit the command key, it allows me to slide things over, right? Or control temporarily calls up that move tool. I go back to my brush tool. I'm painting, okay? Hit the lasso tool, make a selection of that. Hold down the command key and the option key. Drag a little bit of that over there on the same layer. Hit command T, rotate a little bit. Hold down shift and resize it a little bit, okay? Hit return to commit to those changes and we'll move it one more time over here, Command D, and you can see why this is so useful, okay? To be able to do all of these bits and pieces. Now here, check this out. I've got this selected right now, right? Look, I can move that selection, right? By not holding down the Command key. I'm still using the lasso here. I can move that selection. I can select a different color and I can hit Option Delete, like we talked about. Now I'm, for I'm filling with the foreground color. Look at all these things I'm doing, just using the keyboard. Then I can hit Command J, and I can duplicate that whole layer. Hold down the Command key, move it over here. Transform it, rotate it, shift over here. And did you know that this little guy right here in the middle allows you to rotate from that point? That becomes your sort of fulcrum, if you will, okay? I drag that over here, and when I rotate, look, now it's dragging from that corner. Pretty nifty. Okay. Also very handy for people who are doing frame by frame animation, making animated GIFs or videos to be able to animate from, uh, to be able to rotate from one specific point like that, you can imagine. Okay. So folks, these are the most commonly used key commands. I use these day in and day out. All right. I'm calling up color with the option key while I'm painting, right? Painting some color, grabbing another color, painting some color grabbing the color in between, right? Making a little mix of the two, a little blend. Using the lasso tool, making selections. Command, Shift, I. 
inverting my selection, right? And um, moving around my canvas, zooming in and out, okay? Rotating my canvas, getting precise about it. Um, this is it. This is pretty much it. There are very few other things I do. I size my brush up and down with the brackets keys, right? Left bracket, right bracket. I can toggle through a small list of brushes if I want using the period and the, the comma, right? And uh, that is really it. That's what I'm doing day in and day out, day in and day out. And if you know these key commands, it's gonna speed up your workflow and that's what you want. You wanna be efficient. You don't wanna be coming over here if you don't need to, right? You wanna stick with that brush tool as much as you can and not have to switch them up, okay? So I hope this was helpful for you. I hope there are some things that you're gonna to have to come back and watch again. There's a lot of information. Um, and uh, that's it for me today, folks. And I'll see you next week. In the meantime, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Please remember to be kind, hug your kids, and I'll say ciao for now.